Hey, well, good morning and welcome to Kingsway Christian Church. I'm so excited you guys are here this morning. Would you stand as we sing together to start out the service this morning? Come on, They're in your bulletin, or should have been. If uh, you need one of these cards, or if you have one, fill this thing out and take it back over here to the connections booth underneath this yellow banner where Lauren's at. We even, hey, there's Lauren. She'd love to get that information from you and get information back to you about the church so we can get you connected. Hey, so excited to continue our Revolution series. So, so much great stuff that God is going to continue to teach us and show us in His Word. Uh, before we continue singing and worshiping this morning, would you turn to someone around you and say, Good morning. It's glad to see you. And welcome. Good morning. Glad to see you. So great to come together in this community, in this church, and worship our God this morning. Even as we have the anticipation of our baby dedications later on in the service. 
We celebrate the life that God has given us, the life that he is calling us to, not just a life of survival, but a life to the full. Let's continue to worship and sing together. I once was fatherless, a stranger with no hope. Your kindness waken me, waken me from my sleep. Your love it beckons deeply, a call to come and die. By grace now I will take this life, take your life. The sinner has lost his power, the dead has lost his spirit. perspective as we come face to face with you. We don't dwell on the problems or the successes. We dwell on you in this place. Would you meet us and would you reveal yourself to us this morning?
For all my days, Jesus, I am yours. I am yours. I am yours. For all my days, Jesus, I am yours. He lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. I know He holds the future And life is worth the living Just because He is Sing that again Because into life with you when we say thank you. We stand in awe in your presence. Lord, would you continue to teach us of what it means to live a life that responds to what you have done for us. Lord, live a life that responds to who you made us to be. God, would you teach, would you speak, and will we listen now in this place? And we would not result in more knowing, but more doing as we leave this place today. Lord, open our ears and our minds and our hearts as we listen to what you are going to say to your inner prayer.
see you. Uh, I know that uh, for some of you, uh, this is uh, exciting to have 50 degrees on a, on a Sunday. You know, some of you this afternoon, you're already like, your appetite's wetting because you're not sure exactly what you're going to do with your time, but you know you're going to do something awesome, and it's going to be amazing. And as soon as you leave this place today, you could walk outside and the wind won't immediately take you to the bone with uh, chills, because at least that's what happens to me. I do want to turn your attention to some really cool resources that we have available. Uh, some of you may, this may be on repeat in your mind, but that's okay. Some of you need to hear this. We have incredible resources uh, to get caught up on this series. We want to make sure that you are on board and you're able to know exactly where we left off and you're able to come in here and feel like you're right where everybody else is at. And it, There's two ways you can really do that. One is you can jump on our website, uh, kingswaychristianchurch.org, and you can go to our sermon archives and you can listen to the last two weeks and you can catch up, that way you know next week exactly where we've come from. Or you can jump onto our Facebook page and you can actually watch the video of the whole thing. And so you can watch yourself pick that booger in your nose, right, you know, in your row. You can, you can watch all that happen. It's actually filming right now. So, hey, so I just stuck my finger on my nose, so I got it. Good. Uh, and you can actually catch up with the series there. You can listen to all the worship songs. You can see everything that we've done on Sunday mornings uh, on our Facebook page, on our YouTube channel. So that's, that's a really cool resource. For today, we have two resources as well. If you have the Holy Bible app, hello, uh, if you have the Holy Bible app, uh, that is, a, it looks like a little Holy Bible. It's U version. We have a little outline for the whole sermon today in there. You go to live events, you type in the zip code 65712, and it'll pop right up, Revolution. You click on that, it's got the notes for today, the scriptures for today, and you can see everything that we're talking about. Or if you're like old school like me, and you need to touch it, uh, you, can, you should have one of these, at least in your bulletin, or have been handed one you walked in the door this morning. And if you're looking at it, and you're like, there's a thousand blanks, how are we ever going to make it through this? See, we're going to do it together. That's how we're going to do it. We're going to do it together this morning. I'm going to preach for two hours, and we're going to do it. I'm just kidding. No, uh, don't freak out. Some of you are like, whoa, 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 whoa. Don't slip that in there. It's 55. You already said that. No, we are. I'm excited, though, to talk about some things today. Man, there are so many things that are percolating behind the scenes. There's so many things that God is doing behind the scenes uh, with our elders, with our staff. There's so many cool things that God is igniting a vision for really what it means to live on mission, to start a revolution for God, for Christ in the world, and what he called us to in Matthew 28, 18 through 20, this call to go out and make disciples, to teach the things that he has shown us, the things that he has taught us to show the way to a full life, baptizing people and taking it to the very ends of the earth. And the last two weeks we've traveled a good distance. We've really just talked about how God has really positioned us in a place of importance. Last week we said you are a pastor, you are a person of importance in God's plan, and that you have a platform right where you're at. And for some of you last week, God just started working on your heart. I know some of you last week were like, man, I'm trying to figure out what my platform is, exactly where God has called me to be on mission, to live on mission for him. And I know two weeks ago we said, hey, we're going we're gonna to step in expectation and follow where God leads and live on mission for him. So today we're going to start talking about some of the things that starts to happen when you start to live on mission. See, when you live on mission, something happens. You live on mission, shifts start to happen. Shifts start to happen. Can anybody remember the time, fourth or fifth grade, when the shift happened, if you're a guy? I don't remember what grade it is. I'm not going to say a grade, because then I'd put people in a box. I don't want to put you in a box. Can anybody remember that shift, though, that happened? Uh, I was watching a fantastic movie last night. Uh, if you're a girl or a guy, you'll, you'll think this is funny for the night. I was watching a movie called Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Do you remember that movie? Okay. That was a good one, right? That was a good one. I was watching the fifth version of that, which is like, honey, I shrunk ourselves, and now we're stuck in, you know, whatever it is. I like, it, it, it was like the ninth version. But there's this great scene in there where the girls come over for a party, and they're not supposed to, and they're in fifth grade, and one of the girls brings a doll. One of the girls brings a little dolly with her. And as she goes to the front door, she comes into the party, and all the other girls stare at her, and they're like, who's that? And she's like, oh, it's my friend. And she says the doll's name, and all the other girls are like, we're not into dolls anymore. We're into boys. And she's like, oh. And she put the doll down. And like five minutes later in the movie, 
There's like some older kids and some younger kids, and the younger kids are hanging out with the older girls, and one of the guys starts looking at one of the girls. And, and uh, he's like, hey. And you can tell the shift's starting to happen in his head. But the other younger boy, see, he hasn't made the shift yet. And he's like, dude, girls are gross. Why do you want to hang out down here? And he's like, dude, we'll just, we'll just chill, man, whatever. Just hang out. And the shift in his mind was starting to happen, right? Does anybody remember this awkward moment, right? Does anybody remember this tension? I remember. I remember it like it was yesterday for, my, for me. It was one of those moments. I wasn't in public school. I was homeschooled. And so the only girls that I really saw were like friends, brothers and sisters, all right, sisters, uh, not brothers, that's easy. Sisters, <laughs> whoo, sisters, uh, or at church, right? And we were at a smaller church, so there was only like, you know, so, so many, to, you know, count and we knew them all but since they were born. And, and then there was the ones that you met outside of those functions, like sports teams or whatever, you ran into them. And I remember like it was yesterday because... I got to go to public school in sixth grade for the first time. And I remember walking in to public school, and you'd think it would be an overwhelming experience for a sixth grader, right? You'd think it'd be an overwhelming experience. I was intimidated, but I'll tell you guys, I had those folders with like the transformers on them, and I had my Jam Sport backpack ready, all right? And I had my CD player in the back of my thing. It didn't work anymore, but it looked cool, all right? And I remember I walked in to sixth grade, and I was talking to a couple of my friends on the baseball team, and there was like a herd of eighth grade girls. You know, like a herd of them. Not like a cow, don't make it, not like that. Like good looking girls. They just moseyed on by. And I remember as a sixth grader, I immediately felt uncool and not cool enough to be in the room, but at the same time wanted to be friends with all of them, and I had no idea why. <laughs> it was a huge shift. And, you know, from now, it, it wouldn't make any sense if I told you, uh, you know, that wasn't something that happened. Most of us in here, you have that shift where all of a sudden it's like, okay, girls are pretty cool. All right, if you're living in your parents' basement and you're 45, we can talk later. But, like... Girls are really cool. But I'm married now and I have two kids. That shift has taken place and it totally changed my life. I actually decided to marry a girl and then get in a relationship. We had kids. For some of you, over the next few weeks, we're going to be talking about some shifts. We're going to be talking about some, some things that, that they're going to rock your world a little bit. They're going to change the way you think about it. And, and some of them, they're not huge shifts like today. They're not a huge shift, but I'll tell you this. It changes everything. It changes the way we live on mission. It changes the way we live this out. It changes the way that we interpret the world, that we interact with each other. It changes the way that we share the message of Christ. So this morning, I want to talk about this first shift for this week. And this shift is, and I'll just say the line so you guys see it, living on mission takes shift. And the first shift is save souls to save Holes. Saved souls to save holes. Now, some of you are going to forget that. Just remember, there's a W there. Okay? There's a W. Saved holes. Now, before you get too confused, let me define these two, and then we're going to talk about exactly what this looks like over the next few minutes. Saved souls means the plan for salvation. Saved souls means the plan for salvation. And that is a wonderful thing. Don't, don't, let me, don't let me say that that is discounted. I, I want you to know that the plan for salvation is very important. Okay, You need to know. And in fact, we have a very simple plan here. We say this, believe, repent, surrender, and express. We teach that in our foundations class. We talk about how that is, that is how you learn about God, and you believe in him, you, you see your ugliness, you, you realize that you have sinned, you, you have made mistakes, you surrender to the judgment of God, you surrender to his, his justice, and Christ redeems you, and Christ saves you, and his grace flows into your life, and he becomes the Lord of your life, and then, guess what, you express it, just like Jesus did on the cross in front of a group of people who hated and spit and beat him to death, you stand up in front of a group and you say, I believe. And you express it through baptism. 
That's the plan for salvation. It's super quick, right? That's it. Now, save holes is similar, but it's a shift. Saved holes means Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. See, where saved holes stops, saves, saved souls stop, saved holes goes further. It takes it further. It means more. See, saved souls is about heaven, right? It's about wanting to get to heaven and, and knowing that heaven is so important and it is something that, that God is preparing for us and it is our home and we long for that place that we can be with him. I mean, there's so many times that there's those moments where you're like, this is what heaven will be like, like this alone. Like when a newborn baby comes out and the, and the parents are holding it and it's perfect and, and you're sitting there thinking, this is creation in its purest form. This is love. I have un, undying love for this child. You're thinking, this is heaven. This is God with us. This is perfect. That is a great thing to want. It's not a bad thing. But saved holes is about earth and heaven. It's about earth and heaven. It's about realizing that, that your life with Christ does not wait till heaven. The plan of salvation is not the end of the story until Jesus comes back. Saved holes is about realizing God has a plan right now, and he has a desire and a call and a, and a plan for your life today, starting. And he wants you to be a part of it. And if you're a saved whole, you realize that, and you want to be a part of it. Here's a scripture to give you kind of a frame of reference. This is such a, a, a great one to look at because it's actually Jesus' words. And it's really fun sometimes to take it and look at this and just realize how simple it is sometimes to find how we can easily skip over the step or make it something that becomes something we need to shift to. Jesus is teaching his disciples and a crowd how to pray. It's in Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 and 10. And this is what it says. Then he said, this is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. How many of you guys have memorized this prayer at some point in your life? Raise your hand. Don't gator on it. All right? Good. Give the, give the Kung Pao spirit to the person next to you. Just kidding. But seriously, this is a common verse, right? I memorized this as a kid. I remember it. I remember it. But look at the next verses and tell me if you don't figure out what we just talked about. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. Where? On earth as it is in heaven. It doesn't say your will be done once we get to heaven. It says your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. He is simply laying out there is a way and there is a right way. And a way that God has set you in place, exactly knowing your position, stepping in expectation to live on earth for God. Save holes. Jesus is Lord. See, when you say Jesus is Lord, it doesn't mean Jesus is Lord in heaven. It means Jesus is Lord on earth and in heaven. Now, I want to break this down for you in three little small parts, because if you take something real complicated and you throw it out here, it's like handing you a large pizza and expecting you to eat the whole thing. And most of you will get through like two pieces and you're like, I'm done. All right. And you'll leave with like half the truth. And I don't want, I don't want that to happen. And you're walking out of here saying, save whole souls, something like that. And that's all I got. I want to break this down. I want to give you something tangibly to see. Now, we're going to walk through this material. I promise you this. This is an introductory an introduction to some of this stuff. Some of this stuff, it, it, it needs more explanation, but like I said, I don't have two hours this morning. I have 35 minutes. It's only like 25. But I only have a set amount of time. And I want you to listen. I want you to take this. I want you to look at it. I put some verses in here. I put some stuff in here. I'm going to say some things. Listen, some of the best people in scripture are the names of, they were the Bereans, and they just tested the words of the apostles and the people that taught, and they made sure they lined up with the things of God. I'm giving you permission. Test this. 
the things of God and make sure this lines up with what you believe and what you think scripture says. But I want to lay this out for you in three parts because I believe God is laying it on my heart to share this with you. This is a huge shift. Kevin and I have been talking about this behind the scenes. It changes the way that we live on mission. It changes the way this goes out. The first one, if we're going to live a saved whole shift, we're going to really take this on and we're going to say this is the shift. When we, when we talk about coming to Christ, when we talk about being in with Jesus, we talk about being a saved whole. And the way we say it around here at Kingsway, if you've been here for long, we want to see those far from Christ find what? Full life. Not life in heaven. Full life. Right here, right now. We want to see those far from Christ find full life in Christ. The first part is this. The whole story. The whole story. When you're talking about saved holes, the first thing you need to remember is we're really trying to lay out the whole story. We don't want to do this. You are sinning. And you need to come to Jesus. And you're going to be forgiven. And then you're going to get to go to heaven. That is true in every way, shape, and form. But it's not the whole story. How many of you guys have seen Lord of the Rings? Lord of the Rings. Okay. My wife. I have attempted so many times. To make it through the trilogy. And I have not succeeded yet. I haven't done it. And I know that's a sin against God and a sin against Jesus. And I'm trying to talk her out of it, but we're going to make it someday. Sweetheart, I love you. I'm going to throw that in there at the end. But whenever I try to talk to her about Lord of the Rings, it can get so confusing so fast. I've seen The Hobbit, The Desolation of Smog twice, and I've come home trying to explain things about it to her. And about halfway through talking, like, she needs to define main characters. She's like, who's Frodo? I'm like, oh, gosh, okay. We're so lost. I'm going to start over. You know, and I feel like, if I'm honest, trying to explain the story sometimes, if you just tell people this little part of salvation, if that's all we share with people, if that's all we're really trying to do, it, it misses the pungency. It misses the whole point. It misses the grasp, huge plan that God had in place from the very beginning. It misses how this wasn't God's like all of a sudden like mission impossible up there. He's like, Jesus, things are going bad. Get down there. Like it wasn't like that. It wasn't like all of a sudden he's like, we need a new plan. Plan B. No, we don't have a plan B. You know, like this is God's plan from the beginning. This is what he had set up from the start. And when you see the whole story, it makes you feel even more special. It makes you feel like this is even more intentional. It doesn't feel like a last minute ditch effort to get out of this hell hole, literally, and get up to heaven. It literally makes you feel like, no, God came down and rescued me. Like a father rescuing a child. He had a plan. So look at the whole story. Let's just look at this whole story. You ready? Creation. Rebellion. Redeemed, right? There's a redeemed covenant community. That's Israel. We're walking through the whole Bible right here. All right? They don't make it because we can't follow rules. All right? Anybody in here break a rule? Anybody speed to church? And they parked in a handicap place out there right now. No? Anybody not wear their seatbelt? They're like, all three. No, like, like <laughs> someone raised their hand. No, like, but, like, we can't keep a rule, and so it, it fails. And guess who shows up? Christ, right? Christ. And what does he do? He sets up a new redeemed community, and we call that the church. We call that the church. The bride of Christ. And guess what's coming? Recreation. I will make all things new. Genesis, new beginnings. The temptation is to put yourself as the victim and that Jesus is the hero of your story, right? And that's the whole thing, because we like to make ourselves the center of the world, right? Like if you've ever met a 16-year-old girl, like this is everything. 
And we can make fun of them, but then if we really look at our lives, we're like, wow, I still do that. <laughs> Teenagers do that really well. They expose it. So here's the truth. Are you ready? Jesus is the hero of God's story. Jesus is the hero of God's story. Yes, you are a part of it. You are in the story. I promise. You're here. You are, you are important to God. It doesn't change how important you are to God. But if you think, if you think that you're the that Jesus is your hero, I mean, he is. I mean, we sing songs about it. But in the full range, the full story of God, Jesus is the hero of God's story. It's a pretty powerful thing. And then the whole picture of it, it makes sense. The thing that shows exactly the plan of salvation through the whole Bible, it is God's story. And Jesus is the main character. That's why when we read the Old Testament today, it comes to life. It makes so much more sense. It shows itself to be an explanation, a showing, a revealing of God's heart in Christ. And then when Christ comes, he is the incarnate God. When we look at him, we know what God looks like, what God acts like, what he talks like, because he is God. He's the hero of the story. It's pretty powerful, isn't it? Saved holes. The second one is this, the full or the whole expression. This is where I get caught up all the time because there's two parts to this. The first thing is it's verbal. It's verbal. If you're a saved whole and you said Jesus is Lord, and in fact, in Romans, in Romans 10, 9, it says this. Do we have Romans 10, 9? Perfect. That if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be what? Saved. I believe wholeheartedly. Listen to my heart in this. When we have our times of response at the end of service, and when we're in the middle of, of doing some things where we're trying to challenge you and, and get you to, to come forward, it is not like a showing so that like Trevor feels better about himself. It's like, oh, people, listen. What I'm trying to do is encourage, ignite. What Kevin is trying to do is encourage and ignite an expression. An expression. A verbal expression. When you get baptized, when we have, when we have teenagers or, or adults come up here and they say, I believe. I do. It is a verbal expression. When you come forward down these down these aisles and you pray with an elder or with a leader or with myself and, and you start to share some of the things, what you're saying verbally most of the time is, I believe Jesus is Lord. I need his help. And that is a part of the process. But it's not the whole expression. There's another very key part to this expression. And the second is this, demonstration. Demonstration. Jesus himself said this in Matthew 21, and this is one of those scary verses that we like to skip over. Matthew 7, 21, this is what it says. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the what? The will of my Father who is in heaven. There is a powerful part of living on mission that is demonstrating that you believe Jesus is Lord. And I'll tell you, for some of you, that is a huge shift. You thought you had your golden ticket punched, and I'm not trying to rip it out of your hand, and in fact, I can't. But if there is that tightening in your chest, that pitter-patter that you know, you know this is something that you don't do. But if there is a choice, if there is a tension, if there is a moment of doubt, if there is something in your life that you know is coming against what God is wanting, His will, and you refuse to listen, I'm not telling you anything other than what Scripture says. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to be any more judgmental than what Christ said. 
Some of you say, Lord, Lord, but you will not be with me. Hold, saved, hold. Saved, holds. This is the whole expression. I desperately want each of you to say, I believe Jesus is the Lord, but I want just as much, equally as much, to see you demonstrate God's will on this earth, living on mission. That is a part of shifting from just being a saved soul to a saved whole. The third reason, the whole life. This is part of our vision here. I mean, it's in our mission statement. It's in our mission statement because we see it as something that people wait for heaven and suffer here. Not, not, not needing to suffer here. Not needing to wait in agony. But calling out to Christ. Here's the way it is. You ready? The whole life is a three-word worldview. The whole life is a three-word worldview. Jesus is Lord. Some of you teenagers, this is really good for you. You know what a worldview is? You know what a worldview is? None of you, oh, that's good. We're going to talk to you. A worldview is what helps you make the decision whether to watch that movie, listen to that music, date that guy, not date that guy. Say those words, go to that school, buy that car, buy that house. Spend your time. See, a worldview is how you filter things. A worldview is how you decide things. A worldview is how you understand the world. For many of us, we have a worldview. Some of you out here, if I asked you to write it down, you'd struggle. But then when you went and you made some decisions, you'd real quickly find out. Money is the most important thing in the world. That's my worldview. Right? For some of you in here, it's as long as my kids are happy. That's my worldview. Right? I, I could keep going. If I own a fast car, life is good. Worldview. All your things work towards and go towards something. Your decisions, the way you live your life, the way you filter and see the world, you're, you have a worldview. You have formed it in your mind. And when you're a whole, saved person, you have a worldview that says this, Jesus is Lord. He is in control. He is God and is sovereign. He is capable and powerful. He is faithful. And my decisions need to reflect that. How I view the world needs to reflect that. I said last week, and this is something that for some of you didn't think about it this far, but when, when Christ was being crucified, he was crucified by the most powerful nation the world had ever seen. Rome was so vast and so powerful. They were so reckless, murderous. They were so incredibly powerful. I mean, they later just basically wiped out as many Christians as they possibly could. And the ruins of Rome are the things we go to look at today. And the hope of Christ is the thing that remains. I will tell you this right now. Some people believed in Rome as their worldview. Some people believe at times that a nation is a worldview. Jesus is Lord. That is a worldview. It's a shift. But it's a part of being a saved whole. The last one is this. You're truly going to be someone that lives on mission. And it's a safe whole. You want to have a whole life. Idols that are removed must also be replaced. And I think this is one of the easiest and hardest ones. It's easy to say, but it's hard to do. 
An idol is something that you put at the top, something that you see as most important. You can have food up there, you can have sex, you can have money, you can have a relationship other than God. And as a Christian, we're really good at trying to be good. Right? We're really good at trying to be good. So we're really good sometimes at like playing whack-a-mole with our idols. Remember that game? Whack-a-mole? You've all been to Chuck E. Cheese, right? <laughs> Who's been to Chuck E. Cheese? I didn't even laugh and then no one's like, yeah, I've been to Chuck E. Cheese. Who went in one of those ball pits and then later found out it was like where malaria grew? Like, you know what I'm saying? I told, uh, I told John Flowers because he was like, man, we should get a ball pit in the nursery. And I was like, dude, I used to go in there and get changed. Because all the parents would be chasing their kids and all the change would fall out of their pockets at the bottom. So I was like 10 years old. I'd just go in there and just die at the bottom. And I had the pockets full of change. That's why I'd be playing with Chuck E. Cheese. Mom would be like, I only gave you a dollar. I'm like, yeah, but I found 10. <laughs> My hand's rotting off, but I got 10. But a whack-a-mole, right? You just, the, the thing pops up and you smash it. And that's all you're supposed to do, right? And as a Christian, it's really easy to play whack-a-mole with your idols. Something gets more important than God, what do you do? Wham! Get down there! Right? You just stay down there! Right? Your wife starts talking, you're like, hey, get down there! Don't do that. It's a joke. Husband starts talking, and you're like, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But seriously, how many of us do this? How many of us elevate God to his proper place? See, there's a difference between keeping everything level and putting God in a place of honor in your life. Jesus is Lord. It's not about whack-a-mole with the things that aren't so important. It's about putting God in the place that he deserves. When you have him in place, guess what? You need to work their way out, down the line. I'll end by telling you this. Living on mission takes shifts. And the first shift is being a saved whole. It's being a saved whole. When I was uh, 17 years old, I uh, came to my dad and I told him I, I want to go into ministry. And some of you heard this story. I still remember, I was 17, I, was, I dated like 12 girls, and I was working a job, and you know, not 12 girls at the same time, just 12 girls at different times. And he knew my life didn't line up. And I remember him looking at me and he's like, he laughed when I told him I wanted to go into ministry. And I, I remember my heart back then because I was like, but dad, I said the prayer. I go every week to church. I, I've done the things that you said were important. But he looked at me and he said, son, your life doesn't match up. It doesn't match up with what you say you want to do. And I'll tell you right now, some of you have prayed over the last couple weeks, some of you have been thinking about some incredible things that God wants to do in your family over 2014. What do you want to see in this church? You've said the things, and you've maybe even prayed the prayers, and maybe you've told your wife or a loved one, shared it with your family, maybe you shared it with a friend, and I'll tell you, it's going to take you living this out. It's going to take it past the plan of salvation, and it's going to take you putting Jesus as Lord, seeing how he's the hero of the story, fully expressing it in the way you live, having the full life, trusting him, putting him in his proper place. Let's make the shift together. Let me pray for you. Dear Heavenly Father, it is so tempting at times to uh, feel like we've made it, that we've arrived, that, that uh, everything's done and that you have to go no further and sometimes Lord that's the that's the place where when we're standing still the devil just takes aim and uh, God there's work to be done so much work to be done and if we truly live out this plan 
that you have put in place, this incredible story. If we see the wholeness and the fullness of it, if we see the way that it, it takes a life and it doesn't just promise it something someday, but it transforms it right where it's at, that's a, that's a message that we can take to people and it will change lives immediately. It will change ours in an incredible way. And Lord, that is a message that will change the world. Lord, as we begin to shift our our hearts and we begin to shift our minds and we begin to shift the way we think about this. Lord, may you give us a full understanding Lord, that the plan for salvation is a small part, but it is not the full vision. It is not the full mission of why you came. There's so much more for us, so much more plan, and it starts today. Lord, we love you so much. It's your name that we pray. Amen. We are going into our response time. This is the time we do each week, and I, I so enjoy this time, even for my own heart, to just have a few quiet moments with two screaming children at home. My wife works so hard to clean our house and to make it a place of tranquility, but with two small children, it just doesn't happen very often. And I know if you're like me, that the, the world gets so busy and so noisy so fast, and sometimes... Most of us, if we're honest, we haven't been alone and quiet with God all week unless we've been intentional about it. And this may be a small moment in the service, but I think it's one of the most important moments in the service where we intentionally give you some space to listen to the voice of God. To listen to what he says, to listen to what he's calling you to do. And it could be completely off topic. It could be something you were sitting there and God was ministering to your heart and weren't even listening to me. That's it's okay. We'll do it next week, but it's okay right now. Maybe God's been working on you through what I said today, and you realize that the plan of salvation has been hollow, it's not been full, and that you hear this plan that God has that's fuller, and you need some prayer to step into that to make that shift. Maybe you, you, you've never heard the message presented in that way, and it feels so loving and full, and it feels like it, it had a plan from the start, and maybe this is something God's pushing on your heart. Maybe there's a conflict, maybe there's a struggle, maybe there's some health issues. This is the time to respond. We, we, we put elders and leaders up front so that you can come forward and pray and be encouraged. That we can give you some strength as you go out and you actually walk the walk. That you don't just say the words, but you demonstrate, you live the life, you tell the full story of God when you leave these walls. So let's respond to God this morning and do that. And during this time, we actually do uh, communion at the same time. We have stations in the front and the back, and you call yourself, if you have said Jesus is Lord, and you are, you are in the right place with God, you are welcome to come and take the bread and the juice and respond in that way, surrendering your life and saying Jesus is Lord. Let's respond together this morning. As we go into a time of offering, would you pray with me? Uh, Lord, we, uh, we thank you for what you're doing this year. We thank you um, whether we are on the mountaintop or whether we are in the valley. Uh, we know that you're faithful and we continue to trust you. Uh, help us to continue to listen. And uh, Lord, we continue to worship you in this time as we give you our tithes and our offerings. May they use, be used for your glory. And would you uh, just continue to teach us what it means to worship through our giving. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Well, I'd like to, uh, the offering plates are going to be going around, and I want to just remind you that outside of this year, uh, we always do have our online giving. Uh, you can go online to our website. Uh, there's a little link in the top right corner that says Give Online, and uh, you can follow the steps. Honestly, it can take you about a minute and a half to set that all up. You can make it reoccurring. You can make it a one-time donation. Uh, so if you ever have any questions about that, please uh, come ask me. I'd love to tell you more about it. Um, but we are actually going to have our baby dedications right now, so I'll go ahead and invite parents uh, that are going to be dedicating your babies today uh, up to the stage. And if we can all fit up here, it's cool. We can try it. We don't know what kind of weight this stage will hold, so. <laughs> 440 babies. Um, well, feel free to. And uh, just to kind of explain, uh, here in just a second, I'm going to let them introduce themselves, just tell you a little bit about their family and their their little one. Goodness gracious. Um and, uh, but this, this time of commitment, uh, just to kind of make sure you, we all know what this is, because this is just a wonderful time just as a church family to come together, uh, show off the kids. Um, 
show off the kids, but this is this is not a magical time. There's nothing um, spiritual necessarily in a, in a magical way about this, but this is a time where they as parents and um, we as the church family, we come together and they simply are making a statement that they want to raise their child, their adorably cute children, um, to follow Jesus. And uh, that is not just a commitment they make alone, that is one that we join in with them as we are their, their family here at this church. And we want to help them as they make that commitment. We want to encourage them um, to, as they raise their children uh, to be God-fearing individuals who do bold things and awesome things for, for God. So I'm going to just pass it down the line. And uh, they're just going to introduce themselves and uh, might tell you some random interesting stories. I don't know. Here you go. Hello, everyone. This is Nala Elizabeth Pushnell. She was born on the 17th of October. She's now three months old, and one of the cute things, she likes to talk and sing, fancy that. Um, but she loves to sing, that's her favorite thing to do and talk now, so we're having fun with her. Her name means um, a drink of water. In my culture, we use the meanings of name um, to name babies. And we chose that because of how God has refreshed and restored our lives after the tornado and losing everything. She's a mark of new life and new beginnings. Hi, uh, this is my husband Dan, and I'm Bridget, and this is Ledger Reed Schmutz. Uh, he was born April 30th of this past year. He'll be nine months uh, here at the end of the month, and he, uh, fun fact about Ledger is that, uh, we even confirmed it this morning, uh, Ledger and his two-year-old sister Elsie weigh exactly the same, 25.6 pounds. So, she manhandles him right now, but that's going to be changing soon, I'm sure, so. I'm Jamie, and this is my husband, Matt, and this is Nora O'Reilly. She was born December 30th at, how much was she? Seven pounds, six ounces. <laughs> and she'll be four weeks tomorrow. All right, this is, um, this is Chloe Chantel Botts. Obviously not shy. Um, she was born on Mother's Day last year. So the best gift I could have been given. Um, and she was six pounds, eight ounces. Um, uh, her personality is shining through right now. She's the um, happiest little thing could have, we could have been blessed with. And um, she wants to talk to everybody. I will leave her to talk to the church, actually. So. <laughs> this is Reagan Leanne Langston. Um, she just turned five months old. Her parents are Paul and Jean Langston. Um, one neat little fact about her is she has three older brothers, so she's bound to be a tomboy, but until she has a say, she's going to be a girly girl. So. <laughs> this is Presley Kate Ogden, and <clears throat> she was born January 13th of last year. And uh, I've kind of run out of things to say. This is my fourth consecutive time up here, so uh, <laughs> I don't know how old is it, but... Um, now seriously, with, with, each, with each of our kids, I think one thing that as parents, Nicole and I have learned uh, you know, more than anything is uh, our calling from God to, to raise them in a godly home and to bring them up that way. Um, and so that's the reason we, we dedicate Presley. Um, you know, we, we know as parents that we want to have control over everything, but we, we can't. And uh, we know that uh, ultimately God is the one uh, that can lead her in all her ways as she spits up here. So. Well, this is Jake Michael Flowers. He was born January 22nd. Uh, not this year, because uh, obviously he's living there. But uh, last year, he just had his birthday. He's one years old, and uh, he loves dancing, and he loves me, obviously. So, uh, yeah, and he's been a very big blessing to our life. He's a uh, little brother to uh, Molly, which runs around here. I'm sure you've seen her. He wants to talk. And he wants to talk, so. Yeah. <laughs> he's not shy. This is Cooper James Coquillard uh, and my beautiful wife, Katrina. This is our second. He's got an older brother named Jace. Hi, buddy. He was born uh, August 10th this last year, so he's just five months old. Joy of our life. Uh, secret fact, he's a newsy on the weekends, so that's what he does. Uh, we love and adore both children feel very blessed, excited to dedicate them to God. <coughs> Hey, 
you can applaud all this cuteness if you want to. Well, it is very fun to have you guys show off your children. Goodness, they are adorable. Um, I'm actually going to go ahead and invite the elders up because as we end here in just a moment, uh, we just want to pray uh, just a blessing um, as you guys commit to this. And I know it's it's such a crazy time entering into parenthood, no matter which number child it is. Um, and so kind of getting back to that sanity. Um, but we kind of gave them some gifts. Um, there's two things. There's a, a little just baby Bible, and there's this crazy jar-looking thing. And this is just something, um, as, as John and I were <laughs> talking, um, this, this says, it has a number on it that says 936 on the tag. And um, that is the approximate number of weeks that you have with your baby when they are first born until they graduate high school. That's depressing, isn't it? And it's one of those things where I, I truly believe that when you know the number, when you see how short it is, you become more intentional with that time. And so there are actually 936, we're right around there, uh, <laughs> of these little beads, these little marble things in here. And, um, and so this is, this is uh, for you to just set somewhere just as a reminder um, that you don't got forever. And uh, it's, I don't mean that to be depressing, but I mean it to light a fire because uh, you guys are leaving a legacy with this, these children. And I heard one preacher say, um, it, it might not be something you do that will be the greatest thing that for the kingdom of God. It might be someone you raise. That might be the greatest accomplishment of your lifetime. And uh, this, this is the future. And uh, you guys have that opportunity as they are clean slates to mold them and to teach them to be uh, people that follow after God and after his heart. And so this is just a reminder of the time that you would be intentional. And this is a reminder for all of us, no matter what age our child is, um, to make sure we are intentionally equipping and encouraging um, all of those around us, even these beautiful kids, uh, to follow God. I forget who's praying. If you guys want to come up and uh, I don't think it's really possible to lay hands on them. So. Isn't it incredible to see the number of people and babies? There was a time where we could put our hands on each one and as we pray, and it's incredible. They're just beautiful. There's some of us old enough, we're having grandkids at this age, and it, it just continues. So we want to pray for these folks and their babies because the Lord has them right here, and we want them to grow up strong for the Lord. So. If you would, let's pray to our God. Heavenly Father, we just love you so much. We thank you. We, we look at this, the parents and these beautiful children standing here. We just lift them up to you. We know that you have them in the palm of your hand. You knew them so long ago. You've knit them together in their mother's wombs. They are so wonderful. We know, Father, that this these children that are here this generation is going to change the world. There's going to be a revolution. We just ask that you watch over uh, the parents as they raise these children up in their admonition, that they will help them to grow, that we will also, each one that's here, will be there to help to raise these children, uh, to love on them, and, and to help them to be the strong person that you have intended each one of them to be. We thank you for your love. We love you, Father. We love each one that's here. And we ask a blessing on them, the families. We ask, it's a dedication. We dedicate them to you today and every day of their life. We love you, and it's in your name that we pray. Amen. 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 As they're uh, falling off the stage, or uh, firing off, I should say, hopefully not falling, I do want to give you just a few announcements before, uh, as we begin to close and uh, really just finish out our service. Uh, Financial Peace University is starting uh, this week from tomorrow, and there is still space in that class. We still do have kids available. Uh, I do want to continue to encourage and give you kind of a, a just kind of a break down a false pre, pre assumption that this is for people that are like in financial woe and like horribly in debt. 
This is not that. This is trying to, just like the series that we did in November, to break the chains that sometimes hold us back from really finding and using money intentionally as God has called us to, uh, to put you in a place where financially you can find some peace, uh, whether it be from heartache or whether it be with having way too much and not knowing what to do with it, okay? So really, then no, everybody's like, I want that problem. But no, but seriously, uh, look into this class, love to get you signed up and get you a, a part of that. Um, so we do have sign-ups in the back and kids available. We delayed it last week, but go ahead and check out this quick video uh, just because I want to make sure we show that at some point before we do this. So check out this video. Financial peace. We all want it. For a while, I didn't have it. 20 years ago, I hit rock bottom. I lost just about everything. I turned to God for help and I learned how to handle money his way. As you can imagine, it worked. That's why I started Financial Peace University, because God's ways work. Whether you're in over your head or you're doing okay right now, if you bring home $10,000 or $10 million, if you're 21 or 61, we all need a plan. Millions of people have been through Financial Peace University. They have success stories of their own. They've learned how to get rid of debt, prepare for generations to come, and give like crazy. Your success story, your financial peace is up to you. Now is your time. It's time to take control of your money. It's time to get ready for what God has for you. It's time for financial peace. So I encourage you to check that out. We have our table right back here. My lovely wife is back there. So if you have any questions, uh, myself and her will actually be leading that, facilitating that class. It's a video-driven class by Dave Ramsey. Um, but we have a lot of people um, on board already. I think we have about uh, four or five of the uh, mem membership kits available still. So any questions, um, even if you decide not to, but you just want to have some questions, uh, I encourage you to go talk to Lauren back there. Our next announcement is coming from Earl. Woo! Woo! He's making a dramatic uh, walk down. Yeah. the mainly entrance. I like this. I'm gonna get off the stage. <laughs> Will's coming. <laughs> You look like you had your back. <laughs> Good morning. My name is Earl, and this mountain of a man is Will. <laughs> and on behalf of the men's group here at Kingsway, we're going to have our first, which we're sure will be annual gigging trip. Uh, this is coming Friday night, the 31st. Will has been gracious enough to allow us to trample in on his, uh, some of his ground to get to the river. We've got multiple guys involved bringing us. The boats, equipment, everything we need will be there. Uh, it's going to be just a, I'm assuming, a very entertaining time. Uh, what is gigging? Like behind you. Oh, that's awesome. These young guys, they don't know nothing. I don't know anything. <laughs> I, I'm excited for it, though. What is it? So, anyhow, you have, to, you have to come. It is very entertaining. It's not <laughs> quite as easy as it looks. Um, you know, it's pretty challenging. Some things we can guarantee you, number one, it will be cold. Uh, number two, it will be entertaining. There will be lots of food, plenty of fresh fish fried with potatoes right there on the bank. Hopefully there will not be any swimming uh, with Alan driving, Chad driving, no guarantees. So please come out, uh, take this opportunity on Friday night, the 31st, if you need directions, uh, see Will or myself. You also get the opportunity to visit and have fellowship with uh, what I can guarantee you is some of the most godly men we've ever had the opportunity to be involved with. So come out, be a part of this men's group, and you know, get involved. Guys, if you don't know the way, if you don't know the way out to my place, then we can meet here in the parking lot at about six. Um, if you, uh, and then somebody can take you down there. The guys that know the way down there already, just. Just meet down there anytime after six, before six, it really doesn't matter. Bring your kids, they're welcome. We'll just have a good time. 
and uh, eat some fish and build a big fire and you know do guy stuff. So sounds <laughs> awesome. Um, so that's so that's that's six p.m. this Friday. We'll six p.m. You can meet here if you know the way you can go, but otherwise there'll be people here to lead the way. We do have a youth stuff going on. I know I know the time is getting short. Uh, youth trips going on. 7th, 8th, and 9th graders are going on the 7th, 8th, and 9th of February to Guthrie, Oklahoma, to Central Christian Camp. We're doing a service project down there. It's called Refuge. Uh, if you uh, need more information, I have forms on that. Uh, you need to get that in soon. I mean soon. We're leaving a week from Friday. I need to know transportation-wise how many I need to plan for, meals, all that kind of stuff. So please, 7th, 8th, and 9th. 10th through 12th are going to Legend, the 21st, 22nd, and 23rd of February. They're going to Branson. Uh, I need those forms as well. We're planning out meals and getting, getting ready for transportation as well. I need forms in soon. Fifth and sixth graders are going to Superstart the same weekend, 21st and 22nd, to Tulsa. Uh, John is going to be taking a group down there that trip. And if you have a fifth and sixth grader, that is an incredible thing put on by CIY Ministries out of Joplin. An incredible, incredible event. You will not want them to miss. I know I'm making our events sound like trash, but no, that one's really, really, really good. So if you have a fifth and sixth grader, please, please invite them to that and get them going. Our Wednesday night activities are going as normal at 6.30 on Wednesdays. And our meal for today is tortellini cabanada, olive garden salad, garlic breadstick, and desert. If you are new to Kingsley, if it's your first time, we'd love to say stay and uh, hang out for free. Eat a meal on us. If it's not your first time, $4 a person, $12 a family. I will say this last quick thing. If you are part of the Mexico mission trip, we have a meeting. Grab your food and come right over here to the, to the Java house. You guys have a great and glorious day in the Lord. We'll see you later.